Good morning. It's July 4th, and we are going to take a look around the garden. My moon vines are raging. It's a little early for blooms, yet there has been one. I start them quite early because they do take a long time to get going. The sweet peas have been completely fried by the heat. Today we are to be, I think, 91 degrees and 80% humidity or some <laughs> revolting combination of that nature. This hydrangea has started to dry. And um, it, it's so pretty. It just has a, a very different look to it now. And you can see coneflowers, echinacea, purpurea. This one is a seedling, but I assume it was a seed, seedling from Magnus. More poor dead sweet peas. So those will come out. I do have, you might be able to see here, a cabea scandens. I did put white in this year. And I'll carefully remove the sweet peas and perhaps that will get, get going. The Monarda has bloomed and is over for the most part, and I will cut it back very shortly. My um, fairy still has lots of buds on it, but it's looking a little worse for wear. Still a few poppies, which the bees absolutely adore. And Phlox still hasn't bloomed, but it's quite tall. I have my, let's get through the spiders here. I have my okra in this pot, which is huge. And look, an actual okra. Where are you? Oh, there. Here it is. And the other two are starting to try to come along with some okra. And then there are lots of pretty sun gold. And the other plants that I had to replace are now catching up and starting to set some fruit. So all is well there. And I put some zinnias in here just because that's the sort of thing I do. And it's become a little bit of a jungle. Let's see how my mock orange is really growing now. It's the time of year that, though I am enjoying the garden, the appearance of the garden, I start thinking a bit wistfully of fall because it's just so unpleasant outside from a, a sweat point of view. This little dog, Wisp, are you going to make an appearance, Wisp? Maybe. Has been killing voles, which is very good because they eat everything. And my black and blue salvia salvia garanitica is looking very lovely. I will have to deal with the Monarda at some point and move it away from there and only leave the small amount. Still the roses are going. And echinacea. And Achillea, that rose is looking good. And I do work a lot on trying to make sure my peonies are well watered and fertilized this time of year, which will ensure that the show next, late, uh, next spring will be good. Um, I have salvia coming along, moon vine and Cabea scandens on the fence looking good. More zinnias. These are, uh, I think these are queen lime red. I need to put out some more 
I need to start some more from seed. I think I have time and uh, maybe I'll go for some of the Benari Giant series. And the Crocosmia is absolutely fabulous. And coming into its beauty is the Tiger Lily. Now, we are supposed to have some bad weather this afternoon. So, I'm going to brave the heat and humidity, I think, and come out here and stake these. You can see all the, the bull bills. Each of those, and they do already resemble small lilies, uh, lily bulbs. So, if you want to make more, you just plant those and you will get small lilies. And it'll take, you know, a few years to, to get to this size, but they will do it. Um, I have taken most of the blooms off my zinnia so that it will make other blooms. Here's a phlox just beginning. Back there is, oh dear Will, Amante, Salvia. Look at this. I think this one is Ulic Genosa or something of that nature. I ought to look it up and, and see what it really is. Uh, it did survive the, the winter. Which is unusual here. B and this beautiful but Leah needs some deadheading, but it's just been remarkably beautiful. We can take a look back down the border towards the house. And then we'll go look at the back. Here we are on the deck. It's a little bit of a mess back here. I've been redoing these hay racks for a second time this year. The soil went completely hydrophobic and everything in them died. And so I'm taking some of this soil out. Now this was new soil this year and very expensive soil, but they changed the formulation though the bag looked exactly the same. It now has some sort of wood product in it. You hear the pickleballers screaming at each other. And so I've mixed in, I've taken half of it out, mixed in compost, and we'll see if it can retain any, any water. This is what it looked like before 
and um, it's just made of some sort of wood product. It has a name. I'll try to look it up. Uh, I feel a little, <laughs> I feel a little um, cheated over this because it, the bag was exactly the same, and they did not specify that they had changed the formulation. So I bought lots of it and put it in, and found that after a while, it absolutely w repels water. And this is what it looked like. Let's see if I can show you how very, very dry it is. It's just dry. And I was watering it quite a lot. So I'm having to redo this again and see if I can make it work. Otherwise, I'll have to empty it and start over. And so my plan is just to put some seeds in rather than spend money on plants and have them die in this. So, a bit of a hiccup in the hay rack department here. So now we're down at the bottom and we're going to look at the veggies. And uh, the last of my lettuce has bolted. Still pretty. The Celery is still good. You can see the disease on these little tomatoes, but they've been really tasty. So I'm pleased with them. I will definitely plant some of these again. They have been very prolific and very early. Time from seed. I have beans. These are called Tobago. And they all came up beautifully. Planted two or three weeks ago. Uh, lots of uh, carrots have come up. So I have carrots all around there. And <clears throat> I have some more small tomatoes I've planted. This is a different variety. I've planted three different ones in here. I will move one out of each of those pockets and put them somewhere else. These are what little basil looks like. This is some that's a little older. And I've started a few shallots in here as well. And more carrots. I gave up entirely on my <laughs> zucchini in this pot. I, I will put some more seed in to find out if it just was bad because it was so wet this spring. Um, but these cucumbers aren't doing wonderfully either. Look at the mushrooms, which would attest to the compost in these. And a little bit of parsley that I direct seeded in this stalk. At the end of this bed, I have poblano, and something's gone really well with these. I thought they might sort themselves out when it got a little drier, but they haven't. And I've been wondering if I ought to take them out. Um, but we'll see, just for fun, if they actually produce fruit because they are um, flowering. Now, <coughs> this is interesting. I put this thermometer in um, and you can see it's in the active area of this compost thermometer, <laughs> which is a, a testament to how hot it is here. And my paste tomatoes are setting off the fruit despite the heat. Sounds like the jungle here. Um, everything came out of this bed except for the flowers because <laughs> I'm a nut. And um, I put some peppers that I started in down the center and I just started them again because I wasn't pleased with what I had. I started too early and then they looked rather sad. 
Uh, so, anyway, this is the pepper bed with what I thought was pineapple sage, but it does not sp smell pineapple-y. So I actually do not know what it is. And anyway, this is the other end of the bed with the paste tomatoes in, and you can see that we're getting lots of nice tomatoes that I can make um, sauce with. I, I tend to go on and combine it with basil and garlic and uh, freeze it in the form of Italian sauce. Um, I do leave a little out in case I want to make chili with it or something. But we should have plenty. I should have put big cages in here and I did not. Wah, wah. So here I have put in, started some more cucumber. I put lots of seed in and only had two. I have started more beans. These beans are called emerite. They are a pole fillet. And by goodness I can't see anything. My black crim are setting lots of fruit. Unfortunately, a fair amount of it has been cat-eyed, I mean cat-faced. Um, I have pulled as many of those out as I can. So that's a, a very pretty little tomato. Uh, you can see what that does to the tomato. Um, and I probably should pull that off. And there are lots around all over. I find that brandy wine, which is this next one, takes quite a while to begin to fruit, but it has at last. And we should have plenty of those as well. This is one here. And a little truss. And, um, I still have not grappled with my strawberries yet. And this little bunch of emerite vines have been giving me lots of beans. Since there are only two of us, it doesn't take many for us to be able to have two or three meals a day, not a day, a week. So there's one hanging there now. I missed that yesterday. So anyway, it's been a, di a difficult veggie year. And uh, I'm just standing out here <laughs> perspiring like mad. We can look at this lovely Terrace garden. I'm finding it more difficult to get up in here and work, I'll be honest. But it's pretty. I find to myself wishing that I had a flowering quince, so I may have to find a place to shove one in. Camomelles. Are they Japonica, I think? My favorite one is called Cameo. I had one of those several years ago. Um, okay, almost 20 now. And that's what I would look for. But it's pretty. This Echinacea I grew from seed. It's called ruby star and it really is quite a beautiful thing. Look at the insects on it. I think you can see probably not tiny little bees. Anyway, basically that is the state 
of the garden.